Now then, welcome to another one. Today is the first episode of a new series I'm going to be making where I'm revisiting older cameras. Except for today. Today's is kind of new. But there is a reason for that and I'll get to that in a minute. As well as being a photographer, I am a huge camera nerd. And I've made these types of videos before, but I want these new ones to be a little bit more structured, a little bit tidier, you know. I've made these types of videos in the past, but they were kind of, you know, all over the place. And I'm, I'm, although they were a mess, let's be real. So I've got a format I'm going to stick to for all of these videos in a bit to, you know, clean up the channel overall and make it look less like the inside of my brain. Right then, let's revisit the Nikon ZFC. said that this is a relatively new camera and the reason I'm making this my first video in this series is because it's not my camera. I've got it for a limited amount of time and I'm making a second video with it right now so I figured you know two birds one stone. The Nikon ZFC was released in 2021 and it marks a return for Nikon back to that you know, classic styling last seen in the Nikon DF DSLR and more recently seen in the Nikon ZF full frame mirrorless camera. Now the design of the ZFC is heavily influenced by the FM2 film camera from the 80s, but on the inside, it's very similar to the Nikon Z50. Now, this is a very cool looking camera, and I expect it would appeal to anybody who likes the, you know, the old film camera look, or the, the look of the Fujifilm cameras, or to some extent, the Olympus EM10 and EM5 line of cameras. The other point of this series isn't to run down the whole spec sheet and get deep into nerd territory, because, oh, oh I could. You just bet I could. The point is to look back on these cameras with the benefit of time and user experience on our side. So think of this spec rundown as a too long, didn't read version. You know, it's like, you know, buying a new car. You don't care what's under the engine, really. You want to know what mileage it does and does it have heated seats? So the Nikon ZFC has a 20.9 megapixel APS-C CMOS sensor, an ISO range of 100 to 51,200, and it's expandable up to 204,800. It can shoot raw photos in 12 and 14 bit, as well as JPEG in the usual fine, normal, and basic levels of compression. It's a single UHS-1 SD card in the bottom, right next to the battery. Not cool, Nikon. Not cool. It has a 209-point hybrid phase detection autofocus system with various modes for people and animal tracking. We have a very angle 1 million dot touchscreen and a 2.36 million dot EVF offering 100% frame coverage. It'll shoot 4K video up to 30 frames per second and full HD up to 120 frames per second, as well as some 1080p in-camera slow motion modes. The ZFC has no IBIS, so you'll need to rely on lens stabilization for photos or lens and digital stabilization in video with a slight crop. And finally, we have a mic input, a micro HDMI output and a USB-C port, which can be used to both power the camera or charge the battery. All right, so with all that out of the way, let's have a look at the bits that actually matter, the photo and video quality. So this is your vlog test, just holding the camera with my hand at arm's length. We're using 16 to 50 kit lens and lens stabilization only. We're shooting at 4K, 24p, one over 50th of a second, so all of your motion should look fairly natural. With regards to audio, we're just using a little Boya shotgun mic straight into the camera. And I'm not gonna do anything to the audio other than potentially increase the levels if it needs it in post. Right, let's have a look and see what digital stabilization as well looks like in terms of crop. All right, so this is the same thing again with lens stabilization and digital stabilization applied. Can you see much of a difference? I'll put them top and bottom on the screen so you can kind of see the crop, but looking at it, it's not a lot. Um, incidentally, I'm just using the camera's natural or neutral, whatever it is, uh, picture profile.
As you can see from that, the image and video quality were great. Even with these standard kit lenses, the 16 to 50 and the 50 to 200, and the autofocus for vlogging was absolutely spot on. But did you notice that when I applied the digital stabilization, it cropped in a little bit, it somehow looked worse? Now I noticed this as well recently on a camera conspiracies video where he's using the Nikon Z30. He applied the digital stabilization and it somehow appeared more shaky. So I don't know what's going on inside there, but uh, yeah, worth noting, I think. Okay, so what do I like and what don't I like about the Nikon ZFC? Well, let's start with the looks. It is pretty as hell, isn't it? I mean, look at it. I think Nikon really nailed that retro vibe. And even though I'm not really a fan of tactile physical buttons, I much prefer you know the, the front and rear dials programmable to what I want. I just find it more efficient for the way I work. But yeah, I mean, that's a nice looking camera. The image and video quality is great, as is the autofocus. And surprisingly, the battery life on this thing is actually really good for a mirrorless camera. Okay, so what don't I like about this camera? Not a lot, but it basically comes down to the way it feels. After using this for extended amounts of time, it is just not very comfortable. I kept finding myself trying to slide my little finger under there to create some balance. And I was using it with a Brighton Star 50mm 0.95 lens, which is a big old lens. And um, it was just all kinds of off balance. And it just didn't feel great. I like cameras with a decent grip. The, to me, the EM1 Mark II is about as good as you're gonna get in terms of ergonomics. The grip is great, the body is still slim, and it's not a massive camera, but this thing, it's, it's just this, it's the same as all of these types of cameras. It just feels like, even with this grip on, this grip plate, it just feels like what it is. A big rectangle. And that's it. Now, if you're used to this form factor, not a problem. You, you know, you probably love the thing. But for me, I just, I like something with a grip. Now, one other thing I didn't like, and it's a weird one because I used Nikon cameras for like a decade before I jumped into mirrorless. And it's the menu system. I just, after using the Lumix cameras, I just found it overly complicated and very unintuitive. And I, I mean, I eventually found my way around, but that I think was down to muscle memory more than anything else. And I wonder how a new user to this menu system would fare. Overall though, I think this is a great camera. The picture quality is great, the video quality is great, and I think it sits in a very unique place. I think it could be a one and done camera for content creators, you know. It has that nice middle ground between form and function. It's not my favorite in terms of, you know, using it for a long time, but I mean, it does look really cool. Now, the reason I say that this fits in the middle ground is because the Nikon alternatives are the Z30 and Z50 if you stay with APS-C. The Z30 doesn't have a viewfinder, but it does have the fully articulating screen. The Z50 does have a viewfinder, but it has that stupid drop-down screen. It's like, come on, Nikon, what are you doing? So yeah, I think this is that happy middle ground. The ZFC can be found pre-owned for just under £600 or brand new from Nikon for just under £800. That is body only. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more of this type of video, you're gonna, because I've got loads planned. If you've got any cameras you'd like me to do this kind of format with, let me know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.